Good day everyone! Today, I will be discussing about eco-literacy and sustainable development. So when we say eco-literacy, it is the ability to understand the natural systems that make life on earth possible. It is also called ecological literacy. Eco-literacy and sustainable development are interconnected concepts that focus on preserving the environment and promoting a sustainable way of living. Eco-literacy refers to the knowledge, skills, and attitudes necessary to live sustainably, which sustainable development encompasses economic, social, and environmental factors that support long-term human well-being. Eco-literacy promotes a deeper understanding of the interconnectedness of natural systems and the impact of human activities on the environment. It encourages individuals to develop eco-friendly habits and lifestyles that minimize harm to the environment, such as conserving water and energy, reducing waste, and supporting sustainable agriculture practices. And when we say sustainable development, it is a broader concept that aims to balance economic, social, and environmental factors to promote long-term well-being. This includes promoting economic growth, social equity, and environmental sustainability. Sustainable development involves taking a holistic approach to decision-making that makes consider the long-term impacts of economic, social, and environmental policies. Together, eco-literacy and sustainable development promote a sustainable future that prioritizes the health of the planet and the inhabitants. By developing eco-literacy skills and supporting sustainable development practices, we can create a more equitable and prosperous society that it is in harmony with the environment. Okay, so that was about eco-literacy and sustainable development. And now, we will move on to the seven environmental principles. The first principle is nature knows best. So this is the most basic principle of all the principles featured in this blog. So we humans have to understand nature and to follow its rules because if we want to ensure a continuous and steady supply of resources, one must not go against natural processes. If we humans cause any disruption in the cycle of nature, this can bring an imbalance to our ecosystem. The second principle is that all forms of life are equally important. So in this principle, each organism plays a fundamental role in nature. It is easy to appreciate the beautiful organisms like butterflies, especially if one knows their important role in pollination. The giant ones like elephants, the whales, the alligators are the ones we respect uh, mixed with fear or wonder and the products they produce. But when it comes to unlovely, squirmy, and troublesome creatures, this principle is unusually. The third principle is everything is connected to everything else. So in an ecosystem, all biotech and abiotech components interact with each other to ensure that the system is sustained. Any intrusion from outside may cause imbalance and collapsing of the system. The fourth principle of, uh, in the environment is that everything changes. So the environment is constantly changing. Organisms also develop through time. However, with our current technology, we have affected these natural changes. That these changes now causes problematic events to us. Humans should rethink the relationship with the environment because what we believe that is beneficial to the environment often turned out to be catastrophic. So the next principle is everything must go somewhere. So everything ends up elsewhere. It doesn't just disappear. For example, if you throw a piece of candy wrapper away, it disappears from the site but does not cease to exist. It ends up to elsewhere. Gases released in the atmosphere may spread, but it will end up a component of the atmosphere that can be brought down by the rains. 
So any particular type of waste should always be a concern to us. It may be a pollutant or a resource depending on a certain factors. Be a responsible person and throw your trash in a proper place. So the next principle is ours is a finite earth. So earth's resources can be classified as renewable and non-renewable. So when we say renewable resources, uh, these are the resources that can be easily replenished by natural cycles. Example is the water, the air, the plants, and the animals. While non-renewable resources are those that cannot be replenished through natural cycles. Although renewable resources can be replenished, it is important to understand that these are renewable if only they are overused and not destroyed from factors such as pollution. So the last principle is that nature is beautiful and we are stewards of God's creation. So among all creatures, humans are the only ones made in God's image and have been given the right to have dominion of all over his creations. So being the most intelligent and gifted with reason, humans are capable of manipulating creations to their own advantage. Yet, creation exists not to be ravaged and abused, but to be taken care of. Human cannot exist without nature. They are co-natural with the environment they live in. And now we will move on to the next topic which is the making schools a dark green school. So the concept of dark green schools refers to a type of sustainable and environmentally friendly school designs that promote energy efficiency, reduced waste, and minimizes the impact on the environment. So here are some ideas for making schools a dark green school. The first one is use sustainable building materials. So meaning, you have to use materials that are renewable, recyclable, and made from recycled materials. So this can include bamboo, cork, salvage wood, and recycled steel. The second one is install energy efficient lightning and HVAC systems. So when we say HVAC systems, it is a heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems that can be programmed to operate only when needed. So the third one is the use renewable energy sources. So we have to install solar panels, wind turbines, and other forms of renewable energy to power the school. The fourth one is reduce water usage. So we have to install low flow toilets, faucets, and showers, and use rainwater for uh, harvesting systems of irrigation. The fifth one is implement waste reduction and recycling programs. So in school, we have to encourage recycling and composting and reduce the waste by using reusable containers. The next is encourage sustainable transportation. So encourage students and staff to walk, bike, or use public transportation to get to school. Provide bike racks and carpooling programs. And the last one is the use of green spaces for learning. So use green spaces for outdoor learning and promote biodiversity by planting native species and creating habitat for wildlife. And overall, making schools dark green requires a commitment to sustainability and environmentally responsible. By implementing these practices, schools can reduce their impact on the environment while also creating healthier and more productive learning environments for students and staffs. And that was about making schools a dark green schools. And now we will move on to the last topic which is the environmental education. So when we say environmental education, it is a process of learning about the environment and developing an understanding of the complex relationships between humans and the natural world. So it is a type of education that emphasizes the importance of environmental awareness, sustainability, and stewardship. So the goals of environmental education include 
promoting responsible behavior towards the environment, creating awareness about the environmental issues and challenges. It also focuses on providing knowledge and skills to help individuals and communities to make informed decisions about environmental problems. So, environmental education can take many forms, including a formal education in schools and universities, community education programs, public awareness campaigns. It may involve uh, learning topics such as uh, climate change, biodiversity, pollution, and natural resource conversation. Through environmental education, individuals can develop a deeper appreciation for the natural world. Uh, they understand the impact of human activities on the environment and learn how to take action to protect and preserve the planet for future generations. That was my topic and I hope that you learned something from my video lesson. Thank you for listening and have a good day.